asking for counterintuitive pronouns is not nice. Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and I was watching Blair White's conversation with Lacey Green, and something really stood out to me, which seems to have stood out to a lot of people, which is the idea that people should call people by their preferred pronouns just to be quote-unquote nice. Basically, no matter what those pronouns are, even if they look nothing like what they are asking to be called. In this particular instance, they were talking about Riley Dennis, who does not look nor sound like a woman, but claims to be not just transgender and a woman without actually transitioning, but also claims to think that gender basically doesn't exist because he defines as non-binary, even though he is sexually attracted to women and has a giant Adam's apple and a penis. Presumably, I haven't seen the penis. Now, I don't want to discuss Justin Riley Dennis because it's a subject that has been done to death on YouTube and he strikes me as the type of person that has so far gone down the social justice rabbit hole that he'd offer himself to be burnt alive to the gods of intersectionality if the blog he works for, Everyday Feminism, told him that it would lead to a feminist being elected for POTUS in the year 2020. What I want to talk about is this notion that Lacey Green was basically calling Blair White an asshole because although Blair White was willing to be nice to Lacey Green in the discussion that they had, Blair White was unwilling to refer to Riley Dennis as a transgender woman. Like as if Blair is supposed to imagine Justin in the same category as herself even though Blair actually transitioned. That's a little bit rude, don't you think, Lacey? Now, I want to give credit where credit is due. Jordan B. Peterson has a great clip that you can look up that I will actually link in the description of this video where he explains why using somebody's preferred pronouns is not necessarily a sign of respect, but rather, as he explains, is a sign that you are basically willing to enable the delusions of somebody that thinks in the same terms as a poorly socialized two-year-old. It's an awesome psychological breakdown, but I want to examine things from the other angle really quickly, because I never seem to see people think about the other side of the interaction of potentially correctly gendering or misgendering somebody, which is what the person who is potentially misgendering somebody experiences from the interaction of accidentally using somebody's non-preferred pronouns. That too is an uncomfortable experience, and it has been super uncomfortable, especially in recent years, where getting upset over pronouns has practically become a competitive sport, to the point where people seem to commonly fake being trans simply so that they can join in on the bullying of innocent people who might not know to ask for absolutely everybody's preferred pronouns, as if Everybody deserves to be asked at the beginning of every conversation how they identify, even if they totally look one way. To make myself more clear, when somebody who is probably fully transgender does their best to present as a specific gender but ends up being referred to by the wrong pronoun, it is understandable that the person might be slightly upset and ask nicely for the person who misgendered them to use their preferred pronouns in the future, which is what usually happens from actual transgender people. They are nice about it and they move on because life is just too short for this type of drama. However, when somebody doesn't make almost any effort to transition, like in the case of Riley Dennis, or no effort at all, like in the case of several cisgender women I have encountered who didn't even get a haircut and went on to identify as non-binary, what is really going on when they get touchy about pronouns? And remember, kids, that these are the people that tend to get the most touchy about pronouns. 
when somebody who looks like a woman gets touchy about being referred to as she, what is she really doing? Is she merely just advocating for her own comfort? Sorry, their own comfort? Is she being nice? No. She's actually being malicious. She's basically telling you to lick her goddamn boots. She is insulting your abilities of perception and deductive reasoning. She is telling you that you don't deserve to be treated with respect. People who demand gender-neutral pronouns, especially people who don't even make an effort to look particularly androgynous, are not being nice. They are being ridiculously rude to those around them. And when we make any sort of excuses for their behavior, we are encouraging antisocial and delusional activities. <laughs> These people who get bent out of shape for not being referred to with gender neutral pronouns are telling you in so many words and with subtext that they think it is perfectly acceptable to order you around and that they think the only way you shouldn't have to follow their orders would be if you were to follow the same orders as they are following and ask everybody for their preferred pronouns at the beginning of every conversation, which is insane. They have no right to ask that you do the same thing as them because people shouldn't have to do that. And then I guess you follow the same orders as they do because you've shown that you are compliant with their ideology. And then I guess you all wait together for the next order from the head lesbian who's a black lesbian in a wheelchair. Wait, sorry. That's, that's, that's not even right. You are now waiting for orders from a genderless god that I guess every intersectional person speaks to. All right. Um, yeah, that's all I have for today. Drop me a comment. Help me out on Patreon if you think I seem cool. And stay tuned.